150. So you just bought your new Mad Dog. You've blown all your money on it. You don't have money for upgrades like turbochargers and rocket boosters and big board kits and things like that. But you want to go faster than 30 miles an hour. We're going to de-restrict this thing. The restriction or restricted 50cc is kind of a urban legend. Ghost stories, myths. There's all sorts of things because different companies use different ways to restrict these things. The Mad Dog actually is not restricted. There's no spacer in your variator up here. You'll read about that. There's really no um, spacer in your intake manifold. So we want our Mad Dog to go 40 miles an hour. We don't have any money to put into it. Let's see if we can get 40 miles an hour out of a stock Mad Dog just by doing a couple little free mods of de-restricting this thing. Okay, we have this goofy looking air filter thing on here. Bolt holding this bracket on there. Get rid of that. And then uh, this whole thing you can pull out. Normally I thought there would be a pod filter inside here like this. And we could try that on the end of this tube. I found on the 150s, this position here was the best horsepower or fastest speed. But some guys run it out here because if the tire throws water on there, you're screwed. So it's nice to run it out here on this elbow. But this filter here is a bit different. When you take it off, it's a foam filter. Now you're gonna find a hose hooked to right here. And uh, that hose, got a little Y fitting on it. It goes to the valve cover, crankcase vent, and then the transmission vent back here. So the harmful gases that would hurt the seagulls in California will go through and be burned into the engine and turn into uh, harmful gases that will hurt the clouds in California. So I'm just taking this hose for right now, just stuffing it up here. Nothing's gonna come out of there. It doesn't really matter, it can, it can vent the air. I'm just throwing it somewhere to get out of the way. I'll fix all that later. This hose does not connect to the vacuum system. So the vacuum line from the intake manifold to the vacuum pump is just one line. So that's good. If your mad dog idles real erratically, you adjust the idle and then it's off again. You adjust it's off again. It keeps on running away with you. It'll either die, barely turn it up, and then it just takes off and idles high. All these kind of problems are this hose going to that intake. That's a vacuum hose. This little nipple on here is way too small for that hose. And it's loose and air goes in there past it. They put a little spring type clamp on there like that. And it just doesn't do the job. It doesn't put enough pressure on this to uh, keep that hose from letting air in between the hose and the nipple. The nipple's just way too small on these things. So just reach in there and pull on that and see if it's loose. If you're having issues with idle, it probably is loose. Put some pretty thick zip ties around that. Pull them with pliers, really get it tight. That'll solve your idling issues. While we're on the subject of this piece, this is the uh, air intake manifold right after the carburetor. Below here is where you'll find restrictor plates on the Mad Dog doesn't come with any plate. I already know the position with the air filter right here is going to give better top speed than with this elbow on it. If you want to run the elbow to keep your filter dry, you ride in the rain a lot, you live in like Oregon, you're going to need to get one of these filters like this and put on the end of here, which uh, that's pretty easy. Take this apart and see what the heck was inside there. It made it really hard to clean that filter, but yeah, just a little piece of foam and that's about as unrestrictive as it gets. We may not get that big of a bump in power with this filter mod. A really good filter mod for this style of filter may just be to remove this piece of black plastic or cut this open because that is not a restrictive filter at all. And if there was some way to turn that into the wind and get some ram air, now we'd really be talking. Using the Dremel here, the little one, to cut my ram air scoop. Okay, there's the ghetto wrench cold air intake. There's the ram air mod. stupid cold air intake homemade ram air didn't work so we'll go with this pod filter right here stock little carburetor that's a 40 millimeter filter they're cheap online we'll try the pod filter seems to run better with the pod filter Yeah, the 
pod filter on the back again felt a lot better so once again this location wins which i just don't understand the darn thing is backwards seems like it's getting hot air and it's sitting in a vacuum but that one seems to always win it shows you how incredibly restrictive these mad dogs are on the filter this pair valve up here this emissions thing as well as this catalytic converter catalytic converter catalytic catalytic converter these are not restrictions i've done tests with and without these with and without these it made no difference on acceleration or top speed try to look inside this exhaust pipe here if i can get the sun in it right there so there's really no restriction inside that exhaust pipe until it hits that wall back in there if you drill the heads off go to a smaller drill bit just pop it down through there rivets are cheap you could buy rivets and pop these back in get the whole rivet gun with rivets and everything at harbor freight for I don't know, will be $9.99. Get yourself a series of extensions. Oops, I dropped drop one down in there. Oh well, I'll knock it through. Put something else on there, just whatever you got laying around. That's what you want out right there. Nice. Now we want all this fiberglass packing in there. Um, that's going to give it that nice, nice, not raspy, but low sound. We'd like to have this um, metal holy tube thing in. We just want to de-restrict it. We need to open it up to match our better breathing carburetor. Now you could just pull all that fiberglass out and toss it back on there if you don't have a lot of tools and uh it'll sound kind of raspy and tinny i think but uh it'll still be fine these things don't sound too bad with the straight pipe but i'm gonna go ahead and take this centerpiece out so you can see where they've got it welded on all the little welds right here where everything's welded inside here i'm gonna leave this thing round with the welds here i'm just gonna grind these welds down and knock it through I got those welds knocked off. I'm going to continue hammering this thing through. And there's a thousand ways to skin this cat. Doesn't have to be done like this. There's just tons of ways to do this. So there's your little teeny pipe. That's all you have for the exit. Well, the intake is obviously a lot bigger than that. So you want that gone. Then it leaves you with this uh, baffle. And that's just a, a flat plate with some holes in it. So we want to get rid of that too. There it is. There's the offending piece right there. Now we've got this straight through shot tube. It's gonna sound cool. It's gonna be performance. It's gonna be good as any Vance and Hines or Yoshimura pipe out there. This seems like a lot of work, but uh, it's not that bad. It's tough to find a bolt on pipe that fits these 50s. Matter of fact, almost impossible. If you watch my pipe video, you're gonna have to do some welding and cutting and grinding to make these things work. This is really the best option for performance pipe, um, even though it's a bit of work. And I got this uh, rivet gun here. You don't have to get these Mac tools. You can get, uh, go to Harbor Freight, Chinese bike, Chinese tools. You can get this whole rivet gun set for like next to nothing. We'll slide our metal pipe back in here. There is a screen in here also. Um, I think I might bust that out. Yeah, I just took that die grinder and spun it around on that screen and it's gone. So a nice straight through shot. This thing's gonna sound good. All right, pop your rivet in. Don't completely do one just yet. Just get it in there snug and then put some more in. Otherwise you'll move this thing. You won't be able to line the other holes up. So let me get it where it won't fall out. And roll it over and put some more in. Otherwise you'll play hell. Getting those back in the holes, you'll be re-drilling the holes and stuff like that. Alright, got all my rivets in. 
And then you can just pop them in place. Pretty simple. Probably could have used shorter rivets, but using what I had. There's the finished product. Looks good. Goes all the way through. And uh, let's just install it. Put it back together. You see the bike still sounds good. It's not too loud. It's got that nice deep tone to it. You're not going to get that unless you have that with the holes in it and the fiberglass. It's going to sound hollow and tinny if you just take it all out. But yeah, it has a real good sound to it. it. Sounds actually better than it did. top record on that one had the mirror fall off stuff was coming apart we are going to adjust this air idle mixture screw whatever they call it just to make it uh make it take off a little better and idle a little better so you see that little cap right there there's two brass ones not the top one but the little one right here that's your anti-theft cap drill a hole in that there's nothing behind there but a uh, flathead screw it's all right And get it drilled through. We're going to take a wood screw or a sheet metal screw and stick in there. We're going to pull that out. There it is, right there. That easy. With the bike idling, turn this screw in and see if it gets better or worse. So I had to come out more. got worse there it gets even worse let's go back in right about there is my highest idle that's what I'm looking for I'll give you a good throttle response so we've really opened up the exhaust and the intake I think the intake took us to what 30 almost 35 then the exhaust put us at 37 so now we can make make a blind change to it we know we're pulling in a lot more air and exiting in a lot more air so we have the potential to burn more fuel so we're just gonna go up one jet size on the carburetor you have to drain your fuel first and then uh, I like to refill the float bowl like I did when I first got this thing take this off disconnect that hose fuel will come out you can unscrew that, but it's just a mess. Just like that hose feels going to come out. Hold it up high. Put this on here. Let the fuel drain into here. There's the fuel in your float bowl right there. I'm going to put this right back in it. I like to move this accessory tray you know, so I can work on stuff easier until I get everything set. And I do like to put the accessory tray back. I'll probably just zip tie these up here so they're not hanging. And you can just zip tie them in place so you get done monkeying around with this thing. Then you can uh, put it all back together. That'll be good enough what we're doing. While I've got this off, let me show you something. So there's your where they talk about the restrictor being in the intake spacer. You can clearly see the uh, the cylinder head intake is actually littler than this black spacer. So that's uh, not a restrictor plate. It's just a spacer to raise the carburetor up some. So there's no reason to take that out. There's no reason to make it bigger. The cylinder head itself is smaller. You can see that holds about 19 millimeters, and then maybe the cylinder head holds about 16 millimeters. So uh, no restriction there. This intake is about 16 millimeters, 
Um, yeah, no restriction there. Oh, what have those Chinamen done? Look at that tamper proof float bowl. There's a workaround to that. So you can either grind those off, get new screws. You can take pliers and squish them and unturn them like a pair of little vice grips. But either way, you'll probably want new screws. I'm just cutting them down with my Dremel. Put a bald end on here. Yeah, they're not that tight. They just come out, the darn things come out by hand. So I don't know why they're so hard to get off with pliers, but usually they just bend over. I think they put a brass ring around them. So I've got a bunch of these carburetor screws laying around. Those jet sizes are hard to see, so I take a picture of them on my phone so I can blow it up and read it. These are pretty tough. We'll see if I've got these jets in here. Looks like they're this size here. And that was a 83. So we should be easily able to go up five more. So I'm gonna replace that 83 with an 88. I'm gonna put some gas back in our float bowl so it starts up. Won't take much. Once it gets running, that vacuum pump works pretty fast at idle. Feels pretty good now, like a whole new bike. Yeah, it takes off better, accelerates better, no bogging. So I only go up five on the jet. And I knew it would handle that. This makes it easy. jet did pretty good that put me at 38 miles an hour so I can't resist I was gonna go to a 90 but I must have given my 90 to Kevin because my next biggest jet is a 94 so you know what screw it I'm gonna throw the 94 in there I think it's too rich but we'll see <laughs> It's a 40 mile an hour Mad Dog. I know it says 39. My GoPro is one mile an hour slow compared to every other GPS in the world. That's legitimately a 40 mile an hour stock Mad Dog. And I wanted to spend zero money to make it go 40. That was my goal. I guess you're technically going to have to buy that filter and uh, a jet kit and maybe the little screws to go on the float bowl. But yeah, not too much money. I mean, that's pretty much free. 40 miles an hour. I could live with that, but of course we want more. 